everybody. Welcome to another episode of Off the Shelf. Today we're going to be talking about American history. And for such a young nation, we have so much history. And I think that um, we're really done a disservice in school, especially, you know, K through 12, because they continue to teach history as something where you have to memorize facts. It's about um, this guy did this thing on this date, right? And maybe when you get into high school, they start to talk a little bit about the context of what was going on, what led up to these events, things like that. But you're still really getting a very dry timeline kind of approach to history. And of course people are bored with it when that's how they are are introduced to history, whether it be American or you know any other any other type. Um, so I think that if you've had the opportunity to explore history outside of the classroom, then you probably have found that it's much more interesting than you thought. And the really, I think, amazing thing about history and studying history and learning about history is that there are so many different perspectives and types of history and aspects that you can look into. So, you know, it's not just about the political landscape and the, the dead white dudes um, who fought wars and, and you know, ran for president and, and stuff like that. That's absolutely an important part of history, but it's not just that. History is also the everyday people and the things that they did and, and you know, how they lived their lives. So I think that there is an end point for everybody. You just kind of have to find it. Um, I had a really hard time narrowing down the books for this video because my background is in history. I have two degrees in history. And so there were lots and lots of things I wanted to share with you. Um, but I tried to narrow it down and we're gonna jump around a little bit in time and give you some different perspectives and different ideas and some things that maybe, you know, first off, you don't think count as American history. The first one we're gonna talk about is The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. And you are probably familiar with this book. Um, Eric Larson writes a lot of narrative fiction or narrative nonfiction. Um, this particular book is about the Chicago World's Fair and H.H. H. Holmes and his murder castle um, that he built for the fair and then proceeded to kill a whole bunch of people uh, who were either working there or staying there. And, and Larson really dives into the story of H.H. H. Holmes and tells it as a story. It's a narrative. It is nonfiction. It's not, it's not a novel, but he tells it as a narrative. And it's really easy to get into and, and to find yourself drawn in to this story of H.H. H. Holmes and, and the really dastardly things that he did uh, in Chicago at the end of the 19th century. They have been talking about making a movie out of this forever. I think that they were saying that Leonardo DiCaprio was gonna play Holmes like 15 years ago and it still hasn't happened. I would love to see that happen. But in the meantime, absolutely read the book. It's awesome. Or anything else by Eric Larson. He's, he's a lot of fun. Then we have The Johnstown Flood by David McCullough. And David McCullough is a big name in history. He is a, a very prolific um, historian and author, and he's well respected in the field. This book is about the Johnstown Flood. Um, I picked it because it's more local to us. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, there was an earthworks dam built up above Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and in to create a, a man-made lake as like a resort for, you know, Andrew Carnegie and I don't know, all those people, all the rich people in the late 19th century. And in May of 1889, the dam broke and a flood came through and just decimated Johnstown 
killed more than 2,000 people and it was it was national news it was a scandal big mess so if you're interested in pennsylvania history um or you're just interested in um you know well-known well-respected historians i would definitely give this one or anything else by david mccullough a read then i've got a graphic novel for you this is my friend Dahmer by durf back durf do you think that's his real name I don't know, I didn't look him up, so I'm, who knows. Um, but he went to school with Jeffrey Dahmer, the serial killer. Um, and then he put together, he wrote this graphic novel about Jeffrey Dahmer and his experiences growing up with him. He was just a goofy kid in school, um, you know, shy, alcoholic, but hey, it's, it makes you think like the people that you interacted with in class, you don't know, first of all, what's going on in their heads, in their home lives, things like that. But then it's crazy to think about what they might grow into, what they might become. And can you imagine turning on the news one day and being like, oh my gosh, I went to high school with that guy. That's what happened to this guy. Uh, so if you're interested in true crime um, or graphic novels, definitely give this one a look. And next we have 1491 by Charles C. Mann. And this one focuses on the pre-Columbus America. Um, and not just the United States America, but like North America, the New World kind of America. And I think that this is important to include because it's really, really easy when you're thinking American history to start with Columbus or the Mayflower or something like that, and to start with Europeans arriving here. But we have to remember there were lots of people here before. They had complex societies, and, and this gives us an opportunity to really dive into some of those societies and get a better picture of what was going on in North America before the Europeans arrived and brought all kinds of diseases and warfare and nastiness with them. Not to say there wasn't warfare beforehand, there absolutely was, but um, definitely remember that Europeans are not the start of American history. Then we have The Whiskey Rebels by David Liss. And this one is a novel, it's a um, historical novel set after the American Revolution. And um, the main character, Ethan Saunders, was a spy for George Washington and um, is now living in disgrace because he was accused of treason, he's lost his fiance, and he gets recruited to find the missing husband of another woman. Um, so he is trying to deal with that while also struggling with um, an ongoing feud with Alexander Hamilton, who is now the Secretary of the Treasury. And um, so you've got those guys. And then over here, you've got a couple of other characters, um, the Maycots, who the husband fought in the Revolutionary War. And if you're unaware, the Revolutionary War veterans were promised compensation and land and all kinds of things for fighting for our freedom as a country. And Congress was not able to give them much of what they had promised. Um, many, many of these men were not paid. And so they tried to provide recompense by offering plots of land in the wilderness. Um, if you go back to the previous book, was that land theirs to offer? Eh. Uh, but this, this particular family decides they're going to take that offer, they're going to take a piece of land in the Pennsylvania wilderness, and they're going to start making whiskey. And whiskey isn't just a beverage at this point, it's an entire currency, it can be traded for other things, and, and so that's what this is, this is talking about, but as a novel. Definitely check that out. That is a large print version, so it looks huge, but it's large print. Back to nonfiction, this is A Black Woman's History of the United States by Dana Ramey Berry and Callie Nicole Gross. 
And this is another one that it's important to remember, you know, history isn't the just the dead white guys. Um, it's the everyday people, it's the people who are marginalized in a lot of ways, and black women are doubly marginalized bleh, as both black and women. So this takes a look at those stories because they are no less important. And in a lot of ways, those are the type of stories that are really gonna tell us more about our past, about our country, than stories about the big important white dudes that we all know their names, right? These are the stories that are gonna provide insight into our own past. So um, absolutely take a look at this book. It is a newer one and it's, it's very much worth your time to read. I, I highly recommend it. Back to fiction now. This is a classic. This is Ragtime by E.L. Doctorow. And he combines um, historical characters with fictional characters, historical figures with fictional characters. Um, the story starts out in 1906 in New Rochelle, New York. And a wealthy family uh, is at home one evening when Harry Houdini crashes his new car into a telephone pole outside their house. So that's just the beginning and you are gonna encounter lots more historical figures over the course of that that were alive and contemporary in 1906. So um, if you're interested in early 20th century history, particularly in New York, I absolutely suggest you give that one a shot. And then on the other side of the country, we have The Age of Gold by H.W. Brands. And this, in case <laughs> you couldn't guess, is about the gold strike in California. California, um, gold was discovered in California in 1848 and it had a profound impact on this nation. Um, it sped up westward migration and people from all over the world really flocked to California to make their fortunes. That's, they call them the 49ers. It was in 19, 1849, sorry. So many people from all over the world are in California looking for gold. And obviously some of them did strike it rich, but lots more didn't. Uh, and this book examines that time frame and that phenomenon from different perspectives. So you're getting adventurers and entrepreneurs, um, Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens uh, is involved in this. You, you get to see how that's playing out in California and how those events in turn changed America as a whole. Um, for one thing, it skyrocketed California to the top of the, the list of states to be added because you had to have a certain number of people living in, in a place in the territory before it could become a state. And when everyone went to California looking for gold, suddenly there was plenty of people for it to be a state. And all of a sudden, California is a new state. So if you're interested in California history, in the gold rush, please give this one a read. It is fascinating. Um, and I think we get kind of caught up on the East Coast um, thinking about the Revolutionary War and the Civil War, and we forget that there was so much going on out further west. And it wasn't just, you know, the Wild West stuff like Billy the Kid and whatever, that was all happening, but there was a, so much more going on um, that we weren't involved in on this side of the country. It's another one that's bi-coastal. Um, this fiction is Valley of the Dolls. Now, I can hear you already. You're saying Valley of the Dolls is not history. What are you doing? I think that this is a book that provides an awesome view into the 1960s and 1960s culture um, and society because when you read this book, you get just a, a 360 view 
of what it might have been like to be a young woman in the 1960s. Uh, it is focused on three young women who meet in New York and then they are all kind of skyrocketing their way to um, fame and, and success. And along with that comes abuse of pills, various kinds of pills, um, alcohol, things like that. And, and that was hugely prevalent. It's still hugely prevalent in our country. Um, but I think that, that it's important to remember that there are works of fiction that are written about a time or in a time that give you a good insight into what that time was like, even if that was not really the intent. So I am including Valley of the Dolls as American history. It is warm today, guys. Next, we have The Killer Angels by Michael Shara, and this is the Civil War. Um, this is a novel about the Battle of Gettysburg. And I actually was assigned to read this book in a Civil War history class in undergrad. And um, it's it's incredible, it really is. And you, you get a very visceral sense of what these battles were like and just how horrifying and heartbreaking they were. Um, but in a, in a really good narrative way, you know, you're, you're dropped into it rather than kind of reading about it from afar. So I absolutely recommend this book. Um, Michael Shera's son, I can't remember his first name off the top of my head, same last name, has also written a handful of uh, Civil War era novels. So if you like this one, give that one a shot. They are different writers. Uh, I prefer Michael Shera's writing to his son's, but they're both good. So if you're interested in the Civil War, give this one a shout. Um, especially, you know, since we don't live that far from Gettysburg, I think it's important to, to have an idea of what was going on there. Also Civil War, this is The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. And in this one, obviously it focuses on the Underground Railroad and um, the escape of a young slave woman. Um, but, Colson Whitehead imagines in this that the Underground Railroad is an actual railroad with conductors and um, stops and, and, you know, things like that. So this kind of is a, a little bit of a twist on what was going on during the time. Um, it was an Oprah book club pick. It was, it was a very well received book. He is a really imaginative writer um, and I absolutely recommend him. So if you have not read this book, I, I highly recommend that you do so. It's, it's very good. I got two more for you. Sorry, this is a long video. It's the most boring cover ever because there's absolutely nothing on it. Uh, this is Hawaii by James A. Mishner. And um, this is the history of Hawaii all the way back from when the volcanoes erupted out of the ocean and formed the chain of Hawaiian islands to the people like coming from Polynesia and um, settling and, and just the whole span of Hawaiian history. So if you're at all interested in that um, and migration, eastward then you should check this one out this is this is a classic um and it was published i want to tell you if i can if i can find a publication date on here of course not that'd be way too easy i have no idea when it was published but check it out this is a um like i said this is a classic and it's not a small one. So you, you're really getting a deep dive into Hawaiian history. And then last but not least, something slightly different, The Cooking Gene by Michael W. Twitty. This is actually a memoir. Um, Twitty is a Southern cook, but he, he primarily 
reconstructs historic cooking, um, Southern and African, African American types of cooking. And in his memoir, he really sifts through what American cooking and American cuisine is all of the influences and and what is it that we consider American cooking and how much of it is due to black cooks in particular bringing over their influences when they were brought as slaves um, and and you know new types of crops are being grown here and they're they're cooking things for white people that are more reminiscent of the types of things they would have cooked back home or that were being cooked in um, the Caribbean because a lot of people were also brought up from the Caribbean who had been there for some period of time and and so really examining American cuisine black American cuisine and where the intersection is and where where American food comes from um, so I, like, I cannot recommend this book enough. I am absolutely biased. Um, I wrote a master's thesis on American cuisine and recipes. So, you know, take that as you will. But I think that, as I said before, there's a lot of inroads to history and food is definitely one. So if you're interested in food, check out some historical food, check out some, um, some food with different influences because that's, that's, that builds national identity and culture. Um, and all of the things that are covered in these books are a part of our national identity and culture. So being familiar with them, learning more about them is so important and I think very, very rewarding. Um, if you want to talk about American history in depth, I am more than happy to do so. Come and find me. As I said, I have a background in history and I, it's something I really, really love. There are definitely time periods that I know basically nothing about, so I can't help you out with everything. Um, but especially if you're into food, come and talk to me. Let's chat. Um, hopefully some of these books were interesting. Hopefully it's giving you kind of new perspectives and ways to look at things. And as always, make sure you're following along with our 2021 EAPL reading challenge. You can do that either on Beanstack or by getting a paper log here. Summer reading is still going on, so make sure you're also following along with our summer reading and you're getting entered for prizes for that. If you would like more book recommendations, you can submit a personalized recommendation request form on our website on the Off the Shelf page. Until next time, happy reading.